think about the river. The river was a highway. It's a false barrier. It should be a connecting point. There's no place else on Earth where a major river crashes through a major mountain range. It has created this one-of-a-kind wonder of waterfalls, of forest and desert and winds and cloud and rain and sun, and it all comes together. The real beauty of the gorge is in that dance of the light. The gorge is as magical as any place I've ever seen. That is an asset and it's a liability. The I-205 bridge was being built. The urban sprawl would start spreading east and eventually into the Columbia Gorge. Nancy Russell, she took the charge to build an organization and push forward for federal legislation. We were this small, scrappy group, but we had this tremendous visionary goal. It was a very controversial thing. The Columbia River Gorge National Scenic Area Act was one of the few pieces of environmental legislation that President Ronald Reagan ever signed. Some members of my family helped to bring in the federal protections for the gorge. And I realized that I had to become more involved with Friends of the Gorge. What makes this area such a special place for me is that this is where my family is from. This is where we've called home for over 150 years. Starting with Chief Tummuth, who was the first chief of the Walala Band of Cascade Indians. His daughter was Indian Mary. Her real name is Kalaya, and she delivered mail for the U.S. Postal Service. My boys make eight generations of natives that have been tied to the Grand Ronde community of Oregon. We have a very rich family history who have been fighting for the gorge and trying to protect it and being good stewards of the land forever. Once the Scenic Area Act passed, it was Friends of the Columbia Gorge 2.0. We had to move into the role of the implementer and really being a citizen enforcer. Much of the work we have done results in things you don't see, development that doesn't occur. The communities were starting to be threatened with bigger development efforts. Oil trains and coal trains starting to come through. I'm always aware of what our next generations are going to inherit. I want my boys to be able to come out and go hiking with me and have them see the same natural beauty that has been here for generations. I became aware of Friends of the Gorge when I went to a Jeff Merkley fundraiser with my Aunt Val and my cousin Jade, and I had an opportunity to meet Kevin. And we began a conversation. It eventually led to her joining the board. She's just the perfect person to represent us. As a board member, I have a really excellent opportunity to make sure my voice is heard and that the voice of my family is heard. She's not afraid to speak out. <laughs> As we took on youth education programs, we started fostering a culture of stewardship. It will be a place that they're willing to fight for in the future. We need to look beyond the next year into the next 40 years. The lesson Native American tribes have brought to us is thinking seven generations out. The challenge is just constant vigilance. The gorge is just too sacred. It's too special to millions of people and we have to stand guard for it. My uncles used to fish in the rivers near Skamania, as did their ancestors. It's a magical place for me. You never know what development's gonna come through or how the laws are going to change. 
our family is so connected here. It goes hand in hand with Friends' mission of preserving the gorge. Eight generations now, we've been able to come back to the gorge. It's home here. I hope that it just continues to feel that same way for the future generations in our family.